He's really, He's really there. God is there. God is there. He, loves he loves me. And I love him. I love You're, really You're really there. Save the world. Save the world. We, love we love you forever. forever. Amen. Amen. That's good Eucharistic faith. Amen. Amen. I believe it was President Ronald Reagan who was going to speak at the Catholic Cathedral in Washington. And you know, before the president goes to speak somewhere, there's an advance guard of the security agents. And they have to go and they, they, call, it, they call it cleaning the space. But wherever he, like if he was speaking here, then the Secret Service would be here the day before and they would check for any hidden weapons, you know what I mean, and electronics. And then they, they keep men there overnight so no one can sneak in over the night. They get everything ready for security reasons. And part of their security detail to this day are those very well-trained dogs. And those, those dogs, can, they can smell somebody hiding in a closet. Even behind a steel door, those, those, the, the nose, who designed that nose? Science has yet to catch up with God and never will, amen? That nose is so fantastic that with all their electronic gadgets, they have to have a puppy dog with them, well, too, with his big old fat nose. That nose can smell a person or a, a weapon. And so they were doing the cathedral there in Washington, D.C. And it was time now for the men with the trained dogs to come through. And if anybody is hiding or any weapons are hiding, the dog can sniff it and starts barking and making a, a trained noise. They know exactly, they've found several people that way over the years, and guns and bombs. And so they, they always do that. And this time, the, the whole job, the sweep was almost done. And the man, the Secret Service man with the number one dog went up to the sanctuary around the altar. Everything was clear. The Monsignor was watching. And the dog went and sniffed everywhere. He has to find if this. If there's a living human being in the church hiding, he will find it. This is a true story. They went to the sanctuary, and the dog is there on the leash. And suddenly the dog pulled the secret man, pulled him, pulled him, pulled him. He got up on both legs, and he made the sound. He went, oof, 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 oof. And then that's the sound you make when there's a human being hiding behind the door. That's the sound you make. He scratched and made a certain sound at the tabernacle door. That means only one thing. He's never been wrong. There is a living person behind that door. My God. And the secret service man said, Father, Monsignor, who's hiding there? What's in there? You need to open the door. He said, Sir... We Catholics call that the Eucharist. It's the body and blood of the God-man, Jesus Christ. Your Savior is there. And he had to open it anyway. And the secret, secret service man saw his God for the first time in his life. He opened the door and saw the Eucharist. Someone told me that he became Catholic, that agent. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. That's a true story. Even dogs know he's there. Do you know he's there? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you uh, one more true story. When I was a, a much younger priest, I'm still very young, by the way, <laughs> but when I was much younger, I, <laughs> I, I went to visit my beautiful mom. She's in heaven now. Hi, mom. She's saying, go on, Tim, go on. She's saying, right on. And uh, I went to see her. She was a widow by then, and she wanted me to bring her to visit Mrs. Quigley, her best friend in Tampa. And Mrs. Quigley was a, an old Irish Catholic. My mom's Italian, and Mrs. Quigley was Irish. That's quite a combination, the Italian and the Irish. And uh, both in love with God, with Jesus. Both had many children. My mom had eight children. I'm one of eight children. And Mrs. Quigley, I forget how many she had. I think she had like 11, I don't know, 12. So they were close friends. She was in her 90s. And Mama wanted me to bring her to see Miss Quigley. Old, old Irish gusto. So 
I brought mom over to see her in her assisted living facility, a very, very nice place in North Tampa. And we had quite a visit. And when our visit was pretty much done, Mrs. Quigley got up and said, now Maria, my mom, and Father Jim, who's always very respectful, Maria and Father Jim, come, I want to give you a gift. So we followed her into the next room. It was quite a, a nice place, almost like a condominium. We went to the next room, and she took out this big, big flat white box. It was like maybe two inches high, and then it was like a square, but like almost two feet by two feet square. So it was a big, square, flat box. And Miss Quigley, she was a great supporter of the Catholic Church and the Vatican. Her husband was a retired colonel, and they were rather well-to-do. So every year they would go to Rome to see the Pope, and he would give them a relic. They'd come with a letter from our bishop in Tampa, St. Petersburg. They'd have a letter from the bishop, and they'd bring it with them, so after the Pope would bless them, either he would give them a relic or he would lead them, point them to the office. There's a special office there. They would go to the office and get a first-class relic, like of St. Louis de Montfort, you know what I mean, of these great saints. So she had a box full of first-class relics. And she said, Maria and Father Jim, you each take one. It's, I want to say thank you to you. And it was very bittersweet because I know she was saying goodbye to us. And I knew that you could tell. But you know, we're Catholics. We are people of the resurrection. We are people who live forever. We live forever. I saw my dad once in heaven. He came down to me at Mass. I saw him 3D in front of me. We live, we live forever. Amen? Amen? The day my dad died, I said Mass in his ICU room. He couldn't eat anything more. But as a Catholic priest, I had permission to give my dad the precious blood with my finger, because my hands are consecrated. So my beautiful dad, he's, he's on his last breath, but I took my finger in the chalice and the precious blood. I said, Daddy, I'm giving you Jesus. Dad, and my dad opened up his mouth, and I put a drop of the precious blood on his tongue, and he took it. And even though he was in his 80s and he was dying, he knew, he knew that Jesus, who is God, was in him right then. Amen? Amen? The Lord says, the man who eats my body and who drinks my blood will live forever. Amen? Amen? And so some years later at Mass, I was saying Mass, and I turned, there was something in my room, and my dad was standing there to my left. With my own eyes, I saw him. Yo, he was younger than me, and it's not fair. <laughs> he was handsome. He was like 30. His hair was black. Mine was gray. His was dark. He was handsome and he was smiling at me. We live forever. Amen? Amen. That's why everyone in, Cal Ooh, baby. everyone in California needs the Eucharist because the Eucharist is the bread of eternal life. Amen? Amen? I saw it with my own eyes. I put the blood on his tongue and I saw him at my altar a few years later. Amen? Amen. So, there I am. I know Miss Quigley is saying goodbye to us. Jim and Maria pick a relic. So my mom chose one, and then I went in. There was one, as I looked at the whole box, like, I don't know how many, like 50 of them there, 50? There was one, there was like a laser beam coming out of it. <sighs> Kid you not? <sighs> I figured that must be the one he wants me to take, you know what I mean? <laughs> what, what would you assume, you know what I mean? There's 50 of them there, and there's a light, whoop, boom! And I see this light, whoop, that must be the one. And I took it. And it's St. Camillus, a bone. His feast day is my birthday, oh. July the 18th. How in the world did that happen? <laughs> He's a Catholic priest with a healing ministry, and I'm a Catholic priest with a healing ministry. He was in the military. I was in the military. And his birthday, his feast day is my birthday. Mamma mia. Do we have a great God, or do we have a great God? You don't know how great he is, but tell him, when I was your age, I said to God years ago, show me your greatness. Ask him, I challenge you today, especially the young guys, tell him, say, show me your greatness, show it to me. I promise you, he will reveal himself to you in ways that will knock your socks off. It will knock your socks right off of you. You better not have any holes in them, because <laughs> all mine have holes in them. He will reveal himself to you in marvelous ways. But that wasn't the miracle. You thought that was? That was the, that was the tiny part. 
I got the relic. I, I couldn't believe it. But then I did because it's, it's God. When God is your best friend, amazing things happen every day. Amen? Amen. Even your Cheerios turn to gold when God is your friend. <laughs> and so I said, thank you, Ms. Quigley. And then I look, and in a little corner over here of the 50 relics is a white host. And I say that to my shame, to my horror, was a, a host from Mass, a white a host. We're not allowed to take the host home, you know what I mean? You can't do that. And yet Mrs. Quigley, she was a holy woman. She was not an evil woman. She would never do that. So I was in a quandary. I felt like St. Joseph when the Virgin Mary was pregnant. He didn't know what to do because he knows, he knows she's a holy woman. She, would never, she didn't sin. He knew she didn't sin, but he couldn't explain it. That's how I felt with Mrs. Quigley. She would never do that. And my thought was, the Eucharistic ministers come to the nursing homes to give them Holy Communion. And maybe, they're not always well trained. Maybe one of them like dropped a host and left. I mean, they're not always well trained. You have to be very, very careful. And Miss Quigley saw it and put it in the box, you know, respectfully with the, the holiest thing in her, in her house with the relics. So she put it there. But she's 90 and she's absent-minded. She forgot. That's all I could think of. She would never do something evil because that's actually called blasphemy as, or sacrilege, you see. I knew she wouldn't do it. I thought, oh, what do I do? But I am a Catholic priest, so one of my jobs is not only to confect the Eucharist, that means to bring the Eucharist on the altar for you, to bring the Eucharist down. My job is to be a guardian of the Eucharist. And I saw that, and I, I, like Joseph, I could not bear to embarrass Mrs. Quigley. I couldn't bear it. So I did something naughty. Don't tell anybody. I went like this. True story. My mom is there, and Mrs. Quigley, I said, Look, Mom, there was nothing up there. But Mom looked up, and Mrs. Quigley looked up, and I took the host and put it in my mouth. I couldn't, I couldn't bear to embarrass her. If she saw, if I showed it to her, she would probably start crying. I couldn't bear the thought. She was a holy woman on her, she's dying. I just said, look, look. And so they looked, I mean, I really wasn't lying. I, I told them to look, right? So they looked. So they looked. And, and I grabbed the host, and I put it in my mouth, because I'm supposed to guard the Eucharist. I would lay down my life for the Eucharist. I, I would die for Jesus in the Eucharist. I would, because he's really there. So I put the Lord in my mouth, and we said goodbye to Mrs. Quigley. We got in the car, and my mom is so smart. She says, Jimmy, yes. now what's up? What were you doing? <laughs> you know, Italian mothers, they know everything. Jimmy, what were you doing? And I had to tell her. I said, oh, Mom. I couldn't tell you, I couldn't embarrass Mrs. Quigley, but there was a host, and I had to take the Lord into my mouth and consume him. I don't know how old he was, but I had to take him. And I said, Mom, yes, Jim, it was Jesus, because my mouth began to fill with blood. I didn't bite my lip or my tongue. The, Aroma, the scent, and the, t the taste of blood all over my mouth, in and out. It was liquid, and I was tempted. I'm driving my mom home. Uh, I'm filling up with blood in my mouth from the host. And I was tempted, like, to touch, to see what it looked like. But I didn't have a purificator with me. You have to have a, a, a special cloth for that. So if I touched the Lord, there'd be blood on my hand, and... That would be like a form of sacrilege. I wouldn't have any proper way to dispose of the blood of the God-man. So I had to swallow it. It was like, just like my own blood. I mean, it, tasted just, it was blood. And I swallowed and I swallowed and I swallowed like four or five big gulps of blood. I said, Mom, that was Jesus. I was so glad that I took the host. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I'm so glad that I, I did a little trick and took the host, it was God. And I felt like he was rewarding me. You know what I mean? Like he was rewarding me, like, good job, little Jim, good job. <laughs> Just for that, you get a bonus. 
and the blood of Christ filled my mouth at least like five times over. Blood. And so, beloved, I share that story because he told me to, because I don't want us to have any doubt whatsoever who's on the altar. We're not here to do a ceremony. I, I'd be a Baptist preacher if that was all it was. I love the Baptists. I love them, but I'm not a Baptist. I'm a Catholic. You know why? Because I believe the whole Bible, not part of it, the whole Bible. Beloved, the whole world will be Catholic one day, which means the whole world will be Eucharistic, which means everyone, including even the atheists and the agnostics, they will taste the Lord and know he's there. The light will radiate from the altars. What the saints have said is something magnificent is coming. Amen? Amen? Let's pray that all of California and the whole world will fall in love with God in the Eucharist. Amen? No more doubts, no more faithlessness that we will know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Imagine the whole world, there'll be mass seven days a week, adoration in every Catholic church, 24 hours a day. The whole world will be Eucharistic. Amen? Amen. It's time for the doubts to stop and for everyone to believe and to love, to believe in God and to love his son. Amen? Amen. The Eucharist is not just another thing. The Eucharist is everything. Amen? Amen. It's not another thing, it's everything. It's the center of the wheel. It's the center of your life. If you let him, you will become saints. Amen? Amen. It is the bread of saints.